So, dear uh, uh, brother in Christ, so today we're going to see an important topic uh, that is called as Babylon. We all know Babylon was one of the wonderful city which was ever built. And uh, it uh, had a uh, huge uh, magnificent uh, walls uh, which were uh, really very high. Uh, it was almost uh, the height of the wall was more than 100 feet and uh, uh, the wall was so uh, uh, broad that uh, the width of the wall was nearly uh, 250, uh, sorry, 100 feet wide and uh, it had uh, nearly uh, 250 vast towers. So the fortress uh, of Babylon was... Uh, very strong and nobody could uh, easily get inside uh, this uh, uh, fort uh, of Babylon. This fort uh, of Babylon, if you see, uh, its width uh, was uh, under feet, as I told you. It was not uh, a hollow, you see, a fortress. Uh, you see, the fort, it was uh, made of a solid uh, you see, uh, stone. It was a full, complete uh, solid structure which, which was nearly 100 feet in height and uh, uh, it was 100 feet in uh, width also. It was like uh, much what you see in a uh, highway, express highway, the 100 feet road. So that, uh, you see, width uh, it had and uh, horses, uh, the chariot used to continuously run on that wall of uh, uh, Babylon, the chariot used to have four horses and such uh, four chariots, one next to each other, used to continuously, uh, you see, round uh, about uh, on the top of the uh, fort of this uh, Babylon, always to keep a vigilant eye, whether an enemy would come and attack uh, Babylon. And it had uh, 250 vast hours uh, and it was almost impossible for somebody to get inside Babylon. And uh, even if somebody laid a siege for this Babylon, nothing would uh, happen to Babylon because the king who built this Babylon had built it upon river Euphrates. River Euphrates diagonally passed uh, through Babylon so hence, uh, there was a continuous uh, supply of water for Babylon and uh, nothing used to happen for Babylon. Even if uh, it, was, it was laid for siege for years together, there used to be a complete food supply inside Babylon. Because uh, the Babylon itself was famous for hanging gardens. You see, actually, uh, when the river uh, Euphrates entered uh, Babylon, the entire cultivation for Babylon was uh, done inside uh, the fort of uh, Babylon itself. The king actually allowed a beautiful uh, princess uh, from the cold region. And when he, she came to Babylon, it was uh, very difficult for her to stay here. And she told, uh, I'll return back to my hometown, my father's place. And the king did not want to leave her. Hence, uh, he decided that the queen should have a cool environment. Hence, he built this uh, city of Babylon, or the Euphrates itself. Uh, and uh, so, the continuously water supply may be. And uh, there used to be a garden all over Babylon. You see, just imagine, this is one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, which is no more now. So this is how Babylon was constructed. And not only this one, the Babylon was famous for golden idols. You see, we all know uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, their story, you see, they actually built uh, a huge uh, a golden image and uh, whose height was nearly 90 feet high and uh, 9 feet, uh, you see, thick uh, 
it was made up of solid gold imagine uh, usually uh, in other places if they keep any idol they especially do it in a durga festival or ganesha festival where the idols are made of uh, sand or pop and it's only for the height of uh, 50 feet and that too it will be hollow you see but here when i constructed uh, this uh, image and this structure you see it was uh, made of of pure solid gold let us read daniel 31 uh, mosam brother can you read daniel 31 uh, okay brother just a moment daniel 31 <clears throat> okay daniel 31 is written like this uh, nabukodnesar the king made an image of gold whose height was 3 square cubits and the breadth of 3 of 6 cubits he set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon you see he made of pure gold solid gold not hollow gold so its height was nearly 90 feet hence uh, babylon was also called as the golden city in the bible you see the babylon was not only famous for uh, hanging gardens it was also famous for his golden idols read isaiah 14 for brother ah uh, okay Isaiah fourteen four is written like this: uh, That those shall keep up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor seized the city, uh, the golden city seized? You see, the golden city seized. Read Isaiah thirteen nineteen uh, also, brother. Okay, brother, uh, and Babylon. the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the keldes uh, excellency shall be as when god overthrew sodom and gomorrah hmm see it was called as the excellency of the kingdoms the glory of the kingdoms sir we have studied about babylon a little bit of uh, you see in uh, daniel second chapter where the kings are a multi metallic structure which was hit by a stone and you see and made it into pieces hence uh, you see uh, babylon was called as the glory of all the kingdom the first of the five universal empires you see it is babylon and uh, here we see that in daniel second chapter that uh, structure the head of uh, gold itself was compared to babylon and this uh, you see well fortressed uh, well fortified city king cyrus uh, decided to attack it uh, and to capture it and king cyrus uh, he laid a siege to babylon and his entire army waited for years together but nothing happened to babylon at all nobody could attack babylon you see They waited, waited, waited. You see, and thought uh, something uh, they want to do to attack Babylon, but nothing happened. Then King Cyrus he saw, who oh, come to attack this Babylon? This is such a huge city with such high walls, having two fifty watch towers. You see, and having more than hundred gates. You see, and nobody could easily enter those gates because those gates were made up of pure. Ah, huh? brass, solid brass gates. Not even you see uh, a crocodile could easily enter. Uh, you see uh, Babylon. Such was the you see the protection that was given to 
Babylon, even in water sources also. Then King, King Cyrus uh, observed, 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 he studied a lot. Uh, then he decided, you see, what is the source for Babylon? He observed that water was the source for Babylon. Then uh, King Cyrus decided to divert the water. Then he began to dig channels, uh, you see, next to river Euphrates, uh, across uh, the fortress of Babylon, you see. And uh, he diverted the water, the entire water that was going inside uh, Euphrates, uh, that was diverted uh, through this channel. And uh, the river was stopped from entering Babylon. So as uh, water did not enter Babylon, you see, the river Euphrates uh, that was going inside Babylon became dry. So when the river Euphrates that was going inside Babylon became dry, that is the time that King Cyrus and his army used the opportunity to go and attack Babylon through that water channel. You see, and King Cyrus entered Babylon and destroyed, you see, the Babylon. All these uh, things and uh, some little portion of it uh, is given to us in Daniel 5th uh, chapter. You see, Daniel 5th uh, chapter, if you see, Nebuchadnezzar had a grandson, you see, whose name was uh, Belshazzar. And uh, Belshazzar, uh, you see, on that particular day, he had a feast. You see, why King uh, Belshazzar had a feast, if you see, Belshazzar, uh, he saw from the top of the fort of Babylon, that the Medo Persians and King Cyrus were digging uh, something uh, very far away, you see. But they did not know that the, they were digging a water channel to divert the river Euphrates. Uh, and uh, everybody, including the king, uh, laughed at them and saying, uh, and made fun of them. You see, it, brethren? They made fun of them. Uh. So that is the time after making fun, you see, he came to his court. And he declared a grand party. You see? He declared a grand party for the entire Babylonians. So let us see what happened. Daniel 5 1 brother. Huh? Daniel 5 1. Okay, brother. Oh. Uh, Bel Sahar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. You see, he made a great party and he drank wine before the thousands, it seems. You see, if that was uh, there, it would have been sufficient. But uh, as uh, this uh, Belshazzar began to drink, you see, he completely lost his senses and a great mistake he did was he ordered his people to bring the golden cups of the temple and he poured wine and gave toast see, to his gods and the god of Jerusalem and drank wine. Let us see, verse 2 and verse 3. Uh, okay, brother. Uh, Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess, his wives and his concubines might drink, drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princess, his wives and his concubines drank in them. You see, they drank in them. You see, they made uh, equal uh, to other gods, uh, the god of uh, Israel. You see, and as they were drinking, suddenly, you see, something happened. A hand came 
without the body, just a hand came and wrote something strange on the wall. Imagine the condition of a king and all the princess, all their, uh, you see, the what all they drank, everything came down. You see, and they began to shiver. Read verse 4 and 5 of them. They drink wine and praise the god of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth finger of man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king continence was changed mm. and his throat troubled him. So that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smooth one against another. You see, suddenly what happened? Uh, everything, what all he drank, now uh, everything came out. Uh, you see, he lost. Uh, you see, everything, and now his senses were brought to right position. You see, what happened? Uh, his knees began to what is it? Uh, smooth one another. Began to tremble. Now, belt of his uh, waist uh, began to get loose. He suddenly got frightened. What is this? Suddenly, a hand is coming and writing something on the wall. And uh, as usual, we all know very well that if something happens in Babylon, usually they call their wise men. You see, their counselors. Uh, you see, everybody, they call. But here also, you see, he brought all the counselors uh, all the wise men, all the soothsayers of Babylon, but none of them could interpret what is written on the wall. And that is the time Belshazzar's grandmother, she witnessed how when his father, grandfather was there, because of pride, when he boasted against the God of Israel, how he was punished and how something was interpreted by only one man, and his name was Daniel. Immediately, you see, uh, the king calls for Daniel. Tells, uh, oh, please come and uh, read this. What is written uh, on the wall? Now, what does Daniel say? Read verse uh, uh, 18, 19, 20. Brother. Huh? Oh, okay, brother. Bill 23. Hmm. Oh, the king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar the father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and of the majesty that he gave him all people, nation and languages, symbol and fear before him, whom he would he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted off and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the son of man and his heart was made like the beast. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. They feed him with grass like oxen and his body was set, body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of man, in the kingdom of man, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And though his son, O Belsahar, has not humbled, humbled thine heart, though do that knowest all this. Ah, but... See, what did he say? Your father, you see, was full of pride. Because of pride, God punished him so that uh, he was in the forest, uh, living like animals, uh, feeding upon the grass, uh, living among the wild beast for seven years. But though a son, his son, Thou hast not humbled yourself even though you knew all these things. 
that is the reason god has given you this judgment what is the judgment what is written on the wall you see verse 25 26 27 and 28 brother ha huh. and this is the written writing that was written main main tenkel upahar sin this is the interpretation of the things main god has numbered the kingdom and finished it tenkel to art wait in the balance and are found wanting chris the kingdom is divided and given to the males medis and pharisees then commanded balsahar and the cloth daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom very good brother. in that okay. time, ah please 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 read read read, read. Oh. ah okay in that night was belsahar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Ah, see, the same day when the interpretation was read, you see, the same day the king was killed. That means Daniel was promoted. It was only a short promotion, only for six to seven hours. You see, the same day, night, who was killed? The king was killed. It seems. Now, what was the judgment that was given? What was written on the wall? Mene mene tekel upar sin. You see. Many, many tekel upar sin means what? You see, many, many means God has numbered the kingdom and finished it. Tekel means though at weight and the balances and has found wanting. Peres means thy kingdom is divided among the medians and the Persians. The judgment was given by God because of the pride of Belshazzar and the Babylon was destroyed the very same night. The impossible Babylon. You see, all the Medo Persian. army they came inside uh, babylon through the channels of water and completely destroyed uh, babylon see it is given in the bible isaiah 44:27 brother ah okay ah 44 verse 27 right brother hmm there said to the deep be dry and i will dry up the rivers that said of Cy Cyrus he is my shepherd hmm. and shall perform all my pleasure see? even what does he say dry huh? he says to the deep be dry and i will dry up thy rivers the river euphrates was dried and uh, shepherd uh, chosen shepherd uh, cyrus uh, entered into babylon and destroyed babylon you see And once uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, just uh, uh, Cyrus came inside Babylon, he read the the writings on the wall, and he asked the meaning of it. Then Daniel clearly tells that this is the meaning of it. And Cyrus was really surprised to come to know how God had told about him to Daniel even before the destruction of uh, Babylon, that God would hand over. the babylonians to the medo persians hence cyrus was so happy and he humbled himself god and uh, he made a commandment uh, that all the people of israel should go back to jerusalem and build the temple of god and he gave all the materials uh, hence uh, we read in the bible you see what does verse 28 say that said of cyrus uh, he is my shepherd uh, he shall perform all my pleasure hence uh, God chose Cyrus the king, you see, to destroy Babylon, you see, and uh, to build the temple in Jerusalem. It is also given in Isaiah forty-five one to two, brother. You can read after the class, okay, brother. So okay. this is how you see uh, the Babylon was destroyed, and uh, Cyrus uh, knew it very well because uh, it was a city that that could not be destroyed at all. and you he knew it very well and once he came inside he clearly knew after the writing that it is only the hand of god that has helped him to destroy babylon as judgment passed upon babylon 
Hence, uh, he declared all the people of uh, Israel to be free to go to Jerusalem and build a cross temple. Okay. Now, what lesson do we have from this one? You see, we all know very well that the word Babylon is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 10 chapter, where uh, the people had common language after the flood. You see, they all began to build uh, a common, uh, you see, a huge structure going to heaven. Why? Because God uh, destroyed the world by the flood. And if a flood comes in the future day, they did not want to be destroyed. They wanted to escape. So they decided of their own self to build a tower to reach to heaven. That is what is given in Genesis 10 chapter. You see? But was this correct to build a tower to go to heaven? Was it correct, brother? Muslim brother? No, it is uh, foolish. You see? This is not correct at all because this was against God's uh, you see, promise. After the flood, God made a covenant with Noah saying, Henceforth, in future, I won't destroy the entire world with a flood. God made a covenant with them, you see, on a rainbow, upon a sky. But the people, forgetting that one, they began to build a huge tower going to where? Heaven? Going to safety. Okay. This is uh, one of the Babylon that is mentioned in Genesis uh, 10 chapter. This was also destroyed. And the Babylon that is mentioned in the book of Daniel, that was also destroyed. But if you read in the Bible, in Revelation chapter, there is one more Babylon that is mentioned there. Let us read Revelation 17. Brother. Revelation 17. Uh, verse 5. Verse 5, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, and upon her forehead was the name written Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of her lots and abomination of the earth. Mm, see, here in book of Revelation, uh, Babylon the Great is mentioned. Now, when Babylon is totally destroyed in the Old Testament itself, we should come again in New Testament, especially in Revelation. Uh, Babylon, the mother of harlots. You see, that means uh, there is a Babylon in the New Testament also which is that Babylon, that is in the New Testament. Uh, you see, eh? all the things which are written in the Old Testament uh, are an example for us. Uh, remember the type and anti-type? You see, all the things written in the Old Testament uh, are like a, you see, typical uh, representation of what is there in the New Testament. Uh, so, so, in the New Testament, there is a Babylon means... Uh, there should be a lot of similarities between the Babylon of those days and Babylon of this day. Hence, it is called as Mystery Babylon, the great, uh, you see, the great harlot. Uh, you see, now, how is this Babylon? Well, read Revelation 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, brother. Uh, how is this Babylon? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. And there came up, there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, "Come hither, I will see, see unto thee the judgment of the great whore that stood upon many waters." See? This war, the war that is mentioned in verse five, saying the mystery Babylon, where is she sitting? Ah? She is sitting upon the great waters. Uh, you see, remember Babylon of great in the Old Testament, we just now read. Huh? How was it built? Uh, it was built upon river Euphrates. Uh, so similarly, the great Babylon in the New Testament uh, is built upon what? Uh, 
is she sitting upon the waters continue brother next huh? with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication she with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication you see and they have drunk the wine of uh, our fornication uh -huh. you see it says the kings of the earth made uh, fornication committed fornication now first of all what is this waters upon which this woman has sit uh, read the same chapter verse 15 brother and he said unto me hmm. the waters which the swiss where the whore seated are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. Ah, that is the people. So the water represents the people upon which the Babylon is situated. It's the people who are supporting the Babylon. Okay, now which is Babylon? Remember the Babylon in the world? You see? There was great confusion. They went against what the Lord had promised violated God's commandment. So similarly, today, you see, which is the Babylon, you know, where there is a lot of confusion. You see, where there are a lot of changes in doctrines, the false of priest in the churches, that is called as Babylon in God's sight. God had clearly told you that I would never again destroy this world, but in spite of that one, they choose their own way to escape, build a tower where everybody can easily be saved. You see, similarly, today in all the churches, what is being built? A tower is being built to go where? To go to heaven. Very easy path. Just believe in the name of Jesus. Immediately you shall be saved and your name will be written in heaven. Total confusion. Where does the Bible say that as soon as you believe in Jesus, you shall go to heaven? The Bible says, as soon as you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Your sins will be forgiven. Not that you will definitely be, you see, getting salvation. If that was the case, why would Apostle Paul say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling? So, first step is accepting Jesus. Next step is following his footsteps, sir. Confirming that we be like disciples of Jesus, then only we can go to heaven. You see, what does Apostle Paul say? Through much tribulation, we should enter the kingdom of God. Not just uh, bluntly believing and casually living a worldly life uh, after believing in Jesus. That is not the way of salvation. That is confusion. God is seeing from heaven. How is their language? Uh, you see, they all got one common language. What? Believe in Jesus, you shall go to heaven. If you don't believe in Jesus, you shall go to hell. Only this thing. What happens to the soul? As soon as a man dies, it will go to hell and heaven. Every church preaches the same thing. God sees in his sight, it is total confusion. Therefore, God called it a harlot. You see, a confusion. Now, read verse uh, 3 brother verse 3 uh, Revelation 17 3 brother so he cried carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of name of blasphemy having seven heads and ten thrones. See, that woman, where was she sitting? She did not go and directly sit on the water, sir. You see, she did not go and directly ruled upon the people. There was a mediator in between each him, sir. You see, there was a beast, the red scarlet color beast upon which she was sitting. That beast actually supported this woman. Now, we are at this subject in Daniel 7 chapter, brother. You see, the four beasts, first was like a lion, second was a bear, third was a uh, yeah. leopard, and the fourth was like a great ferocious dragon. Correct, no, brother? 
Yeah. That is the same Pistia. That means the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was the one who supported this false church, who actually sat upon the empires of this world and ruled. Therefore, in verse, uh, you see, Revelation 17, 2, what does it say? The kings of the world have committed fornication with her. You see, that means uh, the, the Bible is uh, totally forbidding the church to mingle with the world affairs. Correct, no? You see, Jesus is the king of kings. The prince of this world is the uh, devil and the Satan. Jesus at his second advent is going to come and destroy this uh, <coughs> Satan's uh, setup, Satan's world. And then he is going to establish his kingdom. But before that one, you see, the queen, the princess uh, has to wait like a virgin till the return of her master. It is only that uh, after the return of Jesus, that the bride shall join the bridegroom, you see, and they shall rule and reproduce the whole world in the regeneration, in the resurrection. But here, what did the church do? Even before the second event of Jesus, they began to have relationship mingled with the world empires and began to rule. This was against God's will. Hence, this woman is called as fornication or whore in the Bible. One who has committed fornication. That means, what usually is fornication? You see, ha, when you have relationship with other women or uh, if you have relationship with the other men, in spite of having your own husband, that is called as fornication. Correct, no, brother? Yes, brother. So the church, the woman, is engaged to Jesus Christ. Now she has to wait till the second coming of our Lord when he's going to destroy these worldly kingdoms and establish his kingdom. But here what happened? The church before the second advent of the Lord, she mingled with the world empires and began to rule. Hence she is called as a whore in the Bible. Okay. Now she was sitting upon this beast. The Roman Empire was the one that supported this great, uh, you see, the church system, the papacy system, the great antichrist system. Now, what happened there? You see, there uh, Daniel uh, saw the writing and he interpreted the writing. God had written the judgment upon the wall. Many, many tekel who are That means, uh, though has been weighed and found uh, wanting, you see, God has numbered the days uh, and uh, thy kingdom is given to where? Uh, you see, to the hand of the Medians and the Persians. So similarly today, God has passed the judgment upon Babylon saying, many, many tekel uparsin. You see, and uh, read verse uh, 4, brother. What did she do? Revelation 17, 4, brother. Huh? In the woman was erased in purple and scarlet color and de decayed with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and faith, faith in faith in this of her fornication. Uh, see, she had a golden cup in her hand, it seems, brother. You see, now King Belshazzar, he drank the wine from which cup? The golden cup, which was actually uh, belonging to the temple. The temple's golden cup, he put the wine, you see, and drank it. Up. Isn't it? Uh, isn't it correct, no, brother? That yes, is the brother. reason God, God got angry. So similarly here, this woman, she is a whore. First of all, she has got relationship with the entire kings of this world. And in spite of that one, she is holding this golden cup. Now what is this golden cup? This golden cup is the golden word of God, the Bible. You see, she is holding the Bible in her hand. But uh, what is there inside the Bible? You see, it is not true doctrine. The wine is there. What is that wine called as? It says, you see, huh? 
it is full of abomination and filthiness of our fornication. You see, they have the same Bible. You see, but uh, nothing good is there uh, in the Bible. King, he drank from the holy vessels of the Lord's temple. The vessels were holy. There was nothing wrong in the you see, vessels at all. It was golden vessel. It was of the temple. But what was poured inside, that was filth. You see, similarly, the doctrines of Babylon. You see, how was there? Yeah, totally wrong doctrines. That was not supposed to be poured in this cup. Using the Bible and preaching false doctrines that is totally against God. That is blaspheming against God. Hence, what does the Bible say in Revelation 17? Brother, we read now, the whole world is drunk of our fornication. Right now, you see, okay. the whole world, you see, huh? uh, Revelation 17, 2, brother. Huh? 17, 2? Hmm. Okay, brother. 17.2 is written like this. With whom the kings of the earth has committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk mm. with the wine of her fornication. See? Drunk. They are made drunk. You see? In such a way that they're completely, you see, intoxicated with her. That means what? Whenever we drink, what happens? You see, we don't have our senses at all. Similarly, the false doctrine of Babylon is so imprinted among all the Christians that in spite of teaching them the truth, what do the people believe? They still believe the false doctrine only. Like for example, you see, huh? what does the Bible say about uh, man's eternity? You see, man's uh, end after death. You see, it says clearly that man dieth and is no more. The soul that sinneth, it dies. He goes into his eternal peace and is going to be awake only at the resurrection of Christ. Jesus clearly said, marvel not at this, for hour is coming eh? that all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come out. Correct now? That means everybody in the grave. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. But today, what do the whole world believe? What do the majority of the Christians believe? Then? Where are the dead? What does the world believe? Mm, all, all also what? believe mm. like uh, false doctrine. Mm. Like what? Where are the dead means? What is the reply they give? Death are, uh, they give this reply like that are somebody uh, God has put on, mm. um, like the home of the Abraham. Mm. This is the answer. Mm. Correct, huh? They believe that they are in the, uh, you see, Abraham's bosom, or else they are in hell, they are in heaven. Correct, no? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Or is a reborn, a reincarnation. All oh, these false doctrines, you see. Huh? What does the Bible say? If there is a, huh? the, the soul doesn't die, then why should there be a resurrection? Why has to Jesus come and give a rise, life for us? You see. And the Lord's memorial, when we need to take? Yearly, how many times we need to take? Once a time. Once a time. But they do it whenever they want. Some people do it uh, every day, weekly, monthly. No, this is correct. This is Holy Spirit guidance. No, 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 no. That is the reason they completely, you see, are uh, completely immersed in this wine. They don't have the senses at all. You see, even after we teach, uh, they still believe the false thing. And uh, tongues. What is the meaning of tongues in the Bible? Is it an understandable language or an unknown language? Mystery language, yeah. Uh, mystery language. Uh, what, but what does the Bible say? Is unknown it... language. Huh? It's unknown language. Tongues is the language. It's like hmm. people cannot understand. People can? 
cannot understand can understand language. that's what happened during the pentecost no yeah but um, people can understand but uh, somebody is there to uh to translate right correct interpret very good brother in acts of apostles second chapter on the day of pentecost when the holy spirit was poured they poured they spoke in 17 languages which all the people understood it yeah. was not in unknown tongue and what does apostle paul say if somebody has to speak in a tongues he should be only maximum two or three somebody should translate if nobody is translating he should be better keep quiet but today in the churches they speak whatever comes to their mouth and tell this is god's holy spirit this is god's holy spirit this is the wine they have drunk completely you see huh? the bible says the antichrist is a great pope and the so called protestant denomination but uh, today the both the people the roman catholic and the uh, protestant denomination they are seeking some other uh, antichrist who is going to come like saddam hussein obama osama all these things uh, how come obama osama has got relation to the bible you see satan is very clever in deceiving the people they for they were drunk they're so drunk that even if you tell them they don't listen see what does the bible say about drunkard proverbs 23 brother open proverbs 23rd chapter 29 to 35 brother please read one by one the verses will see Uh, okay, brother. Uh, Proofs. Twenty nine to thirty five. Okay, brother. Mm. Who hath oh, who hath sorrow, who hath content, content son, who hath babbling, who hath owns without cause. Who had redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Ah, you see, who has got red eyes? Who has got uh, sorrow? You see, and uh, who has contentions, argument, debate, simply fighting? You have seen the drunkard, no? You see, simply they will be fighting for some petty quarrel. nothing great at all they'll come drinking on the road they'll catch out of somebody you see this guy is not leaving me uh, way to walk at all wherever i'm coming he's standing there in front of me only simply they will quarrel no? you would have observed see what does the bible say who had contentions who had babblings babblings is what something they'll keep on speaking whatever comes to their mind whatever comes to their mouth who had wounds without cause Who had redness of eyes? The people who are drunk, wow, who their eyes will be red, no? The Bible gives the answer: they that tarry at the mixed wine. You see, what is the wine in the Bible? Wine means doctrine. Mixed wine is what? A false doctrine, sir, which is mixed. You see, mixed doctrine, mixed wine actually is a cocktail. Cocktail means what? A mixture of all the drinks is called a cocktail. So similarly. Eh? Today in Babylon, they have mixed all the doctrines. If you say like this, they will tell like this one. If you put on question, they will give another answer, which is not relevant to the question at all. Entire total confusion. And if you sit with them for debate, for a uh, for reasoning out, will they accept the truth? Ah, uh, they will only contend. Uh, they simply speak babblings. Uh, you see, and. Uh, because they are the people who stay long upon the false doctrines now verse 31 brother ha huh? what does god advise verse 31 look not do upon the wine when it is red when it is given its color in the cup when it mope itself all alright at the last it bites like a serpent and stentens like an adder aha uh -huh. see how does the wine go him sir don't uh, be surprised uh, at the wine it is golden color when it is in the glass 
Don't be tempted and don't drink it. Because once if it goes, what will bite it, Simsa? It will be like biting of a... It will be biting like a serpent. Serpent. Who is serpent in the Bible? Satan. Satan. Don't be, you see, easily deceived by the false doctrines of the churches. Just by seeing big, big churches, grand people, huge gathering. You see, don't be deceived. Why? It is only false doctrine. It looks nice. But once it gets inside, it is not the Holy Spirit. It is a Satan biting us. You see, how does Satan bite? How does the wine work out? It doesn't immediately get reacted. Slowly start. But once you reach the peak, man would have lost his senses at all. That is how it works. Then what happens? Verse 33. Uh, Thine thine eyes shall behold strength of man, and thine heart shall alter perverse things. See, though you shall see strange women, you see, people say, no, a drunkard, he can't see clearly at all. If one vehicle is coming, huh? for him, how it will be? Four vehicles will be coming. But actually, he's doing only one vehicle only. So similarly, he will see what a strange woman. Woman in the Bible means what? Church, the true church. They are not able to identify the true church. They will only see the false church, a strange woman. You see? All the false churches, they will be looking only at that one. Then their heart shall hurt her perverse things. Only if you start speaking with them. No doctrines from the Bible at all. No. Only things outside the Bible. They will take one verse. You see, speak only for a few minutes. Apart from that one, five minutes is joke, ten minutes is song, fifteen minutes is their own testimony, then all the other things and all. That's all finished on subject. So, Sunday service is finished. Everybody go and have biryani and sleep. You see, they will speak perverse things. Then verse 34, brother. Huh? Verse 34, yeah, Thou shalt be as he that lay down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lay upon the top of a mast. See, how will these people be who completely are immersed in false doctrine? They are not stable. It will be like a, a man lying in the midst of the sea. Can we float on the water, brother? Huh? No. Water bed. Can we sleep on a water bed? It will be... No. Like this. You see, it will be like a man... You see, on top of the must, a ship has a, you see, a pole, no? The must. Uh, can we stand straight on that pole? No, it will be swinging here, there. How are these people? Today, they will be in church only on Sunday. By Sunday evening, they will be on all bar, club, disco. The entire week will be a worldly life. So, it will be swinging here, swinging there. They are not stable people at all. You see? They are not firm people who are firm in the truth. They are very fickle minded. Verse 35. Uh. They have stricken me, said though, say, and I was not struck. They have beaten me and I feel it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it at again. They have beaten, I feel it not. You see, they are such a people that even if God beats them, you see, they can't understand. Why? Because they are neither in the truth. They are neither in the false. So, this is the condition of Babylon. She is completely corrupted every Christian with a false doctrine. Now, what does the God give us advice? God gives us advice to come out of Babylon. You see, what did uh, Daniel interpret? Many, many take a person. You were given completely, destroyed. Uh, what did uh, God say to King Cyrus? Everybody who are God's chosen people, leave Babylon, go to your city and build the temple of God. Similarly, God tells us the same advice. Read, brother. Revelation 18, chapter, brother. 1, 2, 3, and 4, brother. 
18, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. Through desire of man having serpent. Revelation, revelation, revelation ah, is still wonderful. You can read from the screen. Ah, okay. Uh, one minute, one minute. Uh, I think you read from the Bible, brother, because I think it's a little bit uh, cut short. 13, 14. Fourteen verse. One to four. Eighteen chapter one four. verses one. Two four brother. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with strong voice, saying, "Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitant of devils and the whole of every foul spirit, and a case of every unclean and." Hateful words. You see, For all this, uh, this great uh, angel, a powerful angel who is coming down is the second advent of Jesus. Brother. He came down with great power. You see, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. And he cried mightily. As soon as he came, he passed the judgment upon Babylon. What did he say? Fallen, fallen. Babylon the great is fallen, fallen. Why did he say it twice? Because the Babylon, the great Antichrist system is composed of two systems. The Roman Catholic and, uh, you see, the great uh, Protestant denomination. Both uh, fell from the grace of God. Why? Because it has become the habitation of the devils. Uh, and the world of every foul spirit, not holy spirit. Uh, you see, foul spirit, uh, false spirit. Uh, and the cage of every unclean and hateful birds. Birds in the Bible means doctrines. All the false doctrines are there in these churches. Now read verse 3 and 4. Brother. Uh. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of our fornications. And the king of the earth has, have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Mm. delicacies. Mm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of their sin, and that you will receive not of her flocks. See, what advice did God say? Come out of her, my people. That means God knows God's children are there in Babylon. Like how Daniel and his friends were there in Babylon. What did God say? Come out of her, my people. If you are God's people, if we are God's people, as soon as we hear this voice from the Lord, we will definitely quit Babylon. Why? Because in this Babylon, there is only false doctrines and false prophets. Read Jeremiah 23, 16 and 17. Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah 23rd chapter 16 and 17. Yeah, Old Testament. Okay. Though said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the word of the prophet, that prophecy unto you, they make you vain, they speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Mm. They, say, mm. they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace, and they shall Unto everyone that walked after the imagination of his own heart. 
no evil shall come upon you hmm. see what is the false prophets the preacher huh? they see that uh, they tell that uh, we have seen a vision you see such and such thing i saw it uh, you see what does the bible say they speak visions of their own art uh, to whom they tell uh, to the disobedient people instead of telling their mistake what do they tell don't worry god is there with you nothing will happen to you how false is this one huh eh? visions will get in the night ah huh? now read verse 25 and 26 ha huh? same 25 and 26 verse okay brother 27.6 is like this i have heard what the prophet said that prophecy lies in my name saying i have dream i have dream hmm. how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophecy lies yeah they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart See? <laughs> prophets of deceit of their own hearts speaking lies read mika 311 what is the condition of the pastors mika 311 the head dear of just for reward and the priest dear of peace for hire and the prophet dear of divine for money you will they lean upon the lord and say is not the lord among us non evil can come upon us you see how are the heads the judges how are the you see the leaders who lead the churches they are all only behind money you see get there tell that we trust on the lord let us have faith on the lord nothing will come upon us you see that is the condition of the world today everybody are totally selfish instead of feeding the flock they are feeding themselves read jeremiah 613 mother for from the least of them even unto the greatest of them everyone is given to covet covetousness and from the prophet even under the priest everyone deathly falsely you see everybody are given to cover as means everybody are behind money they preach why not because they love the lord only because of money because it's a easy way to earn money just you preach few things very pleasant things everybody they'll give money no that is how it's become a good business therefore in ezekiel god condemns them how the shepherd should be instead of uh, feeding the flock uh, they are actually eating the flock uh, that's what uh, god uh, condemns the, the babylon therefore their sins are reached to heaven you see how they built a tower to reach to heaven similarly their sins are reached to heaven read revelation brother uh in short revelation let us read in jeremiah jeremiah 51 then we'll come to revelation 51st chapter with that jeremiah 51 verse 7 8 and 9 brother hmm. babylon hmm. has been a golden cup in the lord hands hmm. that made all the earth drunk on the nation have drunk on of her wine therefore the nation are mad babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed howl of her take blame for her pain if so she have been healed she may be healed we would have hold healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country mm. for a judgment mm. unto heaven and is lifted up on even to the skies ah 
for a sin reached to the skies. Babylon is fallen, fallen. We would have healed Babylon. But uh, she is not healed. She is not having the desire to get corrected at all. As God tells, leave her and go to your own city, the heavenly city, the heavenly Canaan. Quit Babylon and go to the heavenly Canaan because her sins are reached to heaven. Revelation 18, 5. Revelation 18, 5, 6. For her sin have reached on, on, unto heaven and God hath Remember her inquities. Mm -hmm. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double account according to her work in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. See? Eh? Her sins are reached to heaven. Fill her double in the same cup. That is the judgment which God is going to give to Babylon. Destroy her. How was Babylon destroyed? You know? Revelation 16, 12. You see, it sells. Read with Revelation 16, 12. Let us read Revelation 16, 12. Brother. How this uh, river Euphrates will be dried. Revelation 16, 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water therefore was dried up. And the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Mm. You see, what happened here is Himsa, the great Euphrates River. That was the river which Babylon was built. This same river is mentioned in uh, Revelation saying, you see, a great veil was poured upon river Euphrates. It dried up and thus it made way for the king of the east. You see, now, this veil is God's wrath that is being poured upon Babylon. You see, once this is poured, what will happen? The waters of Euphrates will dry. That means what? Waters of Euphrates means what? You see, that means the people, correct? Waters means the people, the nations that are supporting the system. Once the people were supporting the system, they are stopped from going to this uh, false doctrines. Uh, what will happen? The system will automatically collapse. Correct, no, brother? That little Babylon, water was diverted. King Cyrus was made easy to go inside the Babylon. So similarly, the whole world support will be withdrawn from Babylon. Once there is no finance support for this church system to run, automatically the churches will close. Now, who will enter inside? The king from the east, Cyrus, in the Bible, is called, uh, you see, a king, Lord's chosen shepherd. Now, who is the Lord's chosen shepherd in the New Testament? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, he comes from the east. What comes from the east in the morning? Son. Very good. Jesus is called a son of? Uh, he in Malachi 4.2. So, Jesus is going to enter Babylon and destroy this Babylon. You see, the same way as it was destroyed in the Old Testament. But Daniel was already in Babylon and interpreted God's judgment. So similarly, God's children are there in Babylon interpreting God's commandment that the false system will soon be destroyed. How it will be destroyed? Revelation 18.21, brother. Revelation 18.21. And a mighty angel took upon a stone like a great milestone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, mm. and shall be found no more at all. No more at all. Like a great millstone that is thrown into the sea. Sea again means nations, brother. Millstone means if some stone is thrown, or a great millstone is thrown into the sea, will somebody try to lift it up? No. There are great, great steamers, ships uh, that have sank in the sea. The costliest uh, ship ever made was Titanic. It sank in sea. Did they ever try to bring it up, brother? No. No. Why? Because it will be more expensive to bring it up. And it will be more easy 
to build a new ship uh, isn't it that is the reason once something is sank in the sea it is never been brought forth at all it will never come up similarly this babylon will be destroyed never to come up you see this great system of a uh, roman catholic system and the entire protestant denomination both of this thing shall be destroyed and shall never come up you see now uh, what is our responsibility what we should do revelation 10 verse uh, uh 9 10 11 brother revelation 10 verse 9 10 11 correct okay and i went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make the belly bitter but it shall be in the mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Hey, what does he say? The little book was given to John. He ate the book, but when he kept it in his mouth, it was sweet. But once when it entered inside his belly, it became bitter. Similarly, the word of God, the real truth. How is it? It is very sweet when you start eating. You see, isn't the truth what you have been listening for many years? Isn't it pleasant and isn't it tasty, brother? Yeah. Yes. But once if it goes inside, it takes account of us. It asks account from us. It tells us the truth compels us. The truth tells us to walk accordingly. Now, is it so easy to walk as per the truth? No. Yes, that is the bitterness. But yet, if we love the Lord, we need to walk as per the truth. It will be bitter. You see, it's not so sweet. But if we want to be sweet and pleasant in God's sight, we need to eat it. We need to digest it. It will be difficult, but yet the Lord will help us. Therefore, what did King Cyrus say? Everybody who are God's children, please go from Babylon. Build the Lord's temple, not your own house. Build your Lord's temple. So what does God advise us? Revelation 18, 4, brother. And I heard another voice from the heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin. Yes. And that you receive not of her plug. Yes. Come out of her, my people. The call, the call goes only for God's people, not for everybody. If we are God's people, then God is speaking to us and telling, come out. If we are really God's people, you would definitely listen to this call and come out. You see, because very shortly, God's plague is going to come upon the entire church fall system. It is going to be destroyed. We can't be there and make a calling lecture. So it is time that we decide and we come out. If you want to make a calling lecture, if you want to be particulars of the heavenly salvation, then we need to take a bold stand. Come out of Babylon. My people. Okay, brother. Lord, add his blessings to his words. Any doubts, any questions you have, you can definitely ask, uh, Muslim brother. Mm, yes, brother. Not not so much doubt. Uh, it's good classes. Mm. Yeah, I'll discuss about it the whole uh, week also. Okay. My time is also a bit... Uh, gone today it's like two it's like nearly three a.m i need to go to college morning uh so yeah i will prepare about it yeah i'll ask through god i'll ask the uh, i 
I'm just I'm I ask I just will the God talk with me, just be the encounter with me. Yeah, I'm just asking it. Sure, brother. Uh, we will also remember uh, you in our prayers, Moses, brother. So don't worry. Yeah. So the lot of uh, other brethren there. You see, I was also a part of it. Uh, uh, nearly 23, 24 years before. So it was yeah. very difficult for me to take that bold step. So, but uh, once I took it, uh, you see, the Lord never made me to turn back again. So his mercy, his grace is abundant. So he would never leave us. So have faith on the Lord, brother. So yeah. it's a faith. It's a test of your faith. Okay? Okay, brother. Okay, so in the last, can you offer uh, one prayer? Next week, uh, we'll meet again for the class. Uh, okay, brother. Okay, thank you. Uh, our okay. Heavenly Father. Yeah, brother. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us wonderful time uh, for a good fellowship. That you have uh, given us chance to learn about the Babylon that uh, it was a really tough and uh, a great t topic that we ha that I have been learning today. Lord, I thank you that you are calling to your people be out of the Babylon. Lord, if you are willing willing, willing me to be the participant, uh, do as your will uh, upon me, Lord. I praise and glorify you in your name. I just, I want to seek the kingdom of your upon us lord uh until our next classes uh, be upon us lead us lead up lead our soul uh by your, your grace uh be be our uh be in all our steps that we praise and glorify you in your name uh, in the name of our heavenly Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear Brother Mosam. Amen.